This episode is sponsored by Omaze at omaze.com slash travelingrobert. In this final episode of the 2021 mini season, we are driving back south through the Antebellum Trail. We're going to visit America's Georgia. Also, planes and all the historical sites related to the 39th President of the United States, Jimmy Carter, including the Pièce de Résistance, his boyhood farm. Then, back to Florida. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV wherever I want to be, because I'm free. In my RV, yeah. What better way to start the day than with a great, nutritious breakfast? Onions and peppers, fresh mozzarella, and heritage breed eggs. Yum! So, since it is a pretty steep hill going down, I decided to tell Illy to film our descent. I mean, what could possibly go wrong, right? This, by the way, Track Rock, beautiful private campground in the Georgia mountains. Oh no! I wonder why only my front brakes are locking. I have a feeling that's not supposed to happen. Well, besides almost ending up in the lake, I'd say that was a pretty successful... <laughs> or not. Uh. In 1,000 feet, turn right onto Tracker Camp Road. Yeah, this gravel can be treacherous. Okay, let's, let's add a... Let's stop at... Athens, Georgia. Okay, adding a stop at Athens. Thank you. Head southwest toward Tracker Camp Road. The final destination today is Americas, Georgia. But we're going to take kind of the scenic route, mainly through Athens, avoiding the interstate for the most part, through what is known as the Antebellum Trail. More research shall go into this. I find it funny, whenever you pass a slow-moving truck, many times the truck will immediately overtake you again. I don't know. In any case, US 441 South here, very nice drive, and a good alternative to I-75 if you're not in that much of a hurry. I set the GPS to Athens, Georgia. Not any specific point of interest, so let's see where it takes us. And so far... It is taking us through all these narrow residential streets. Yeah, perhaps not the iconic antebellum views of Athens we were expecting, but still, I find it very interesting to sometimes explore the residential neighborhoods and see how people live, instead of just the city highlights.
Let me tell you about Omaze. Omaze gives away one-of-a-kind prizes and experiences while donating money to chosen charities all across the world. And their sustainable approach to fundraising means that nonprofits can spend less time and money raising funds and instead focus on serving the needs of the community. This time, the prize is a sprinter van with an $80,000 eco-friendly conversion, rooftop solar panels and van smiths, green package with all natural build materials and a carbon offset package to fund environmental repair programs. For example, wool insulation, blue stained pine ceiling, bamboo countertop, and a custom green Van Smith logo. It's a beauty and you can either have your van delivered to you or get flown out to the Van Smith shop in Colorado and road trip back. Uh, that's what I would do, actually. Your donation will support the Honold Foundation. They envision a world where old people have equal access to opportunity and live in balance with the environment. And they believe in solar as a proven environmentally sound solution for energy access worldwide. So, for a chance to win this awesome Sprinter conversion van and support the Honold Foundation, go to omaze.com slash travelingrobert. I'll put a link in the description box. It would be interesting to know how Google determines the center of a town. If I, if I just say Athens, Georgia, why you would think that the center of Athens, Georgia is that residential neighborhood? Maybe that's where the town was founded? I don't know. I, I would have thought like it would be like a UGA Visitor Center, Exit 7. That's like the University of Georgia, Athens. So, I would think it would take me to downtown, but... We're gonna continue and we'll revisit Athens one of these days. Actually, one of these days. Sooner than later, we're going to come back and do the whole antebellum trail, which is this 100-mile drive through seven historic communities that escaped the worst of the Civil War destruction, so they preserve what remains of that time. Gone with the wind. And it runs from Athens down to Macon. Speaking of Macon, here we are. We've been here before and we'll come back again, but today the road will take us a little farther south, or southwest, rather, to the town of Americus. Here we are, Americus KOA Brickyard, and they offer free disc golf courses. We ought to try that one of these days. The checking process is a little different. There's a camp host who welcomes you and directs you to your site, and then you have to go by the office, which is in the back, or by the other entrance, and do a proper checking. Here we are, nice pull-through site. And another day comes to an end. We're gonna stay here for a couple of days, get some work done, and then explore the area. It is time for another RV cooking show, and today we're doing pork loin and potatoes. Olive oil, salt and pepper, hmm, yum! The pork came marinated with teriyaki flavor, so nothing to do there. We're gonna do some grilling. Yeah. It says 450, that's probably sufficiently hot. Now we're gonna put the, our two loins. And I have never done this before, so if I'm doing it wrong, Make sure to let me know. I know it's supposed to be a dry rub, and I never use this uh, pre-made marinated, you know, things. But I saw it at Publix, and it was convenient. So, yeah. Now we're gonna do two and a half minutes on each side, and then I'll bring the potatoes, and then we'll lower the temperature. And hopefully, it'll be good. Potatoes in the middle, and now. It's supposed to flip in like one quarter. There we go. Oh, there's a beautiful grill marks right there. Well, it's been roughly 20 minutes. Just check on our pork here and turn it. And uh, well, it looks kind of raw still, but I'm just gonna turn it. And oh, that's no good. It kind of burned a little bit. 
which is kind of expected because it was not a dry rub, it was, uh, it came pre-marinated. Here we have the potatoes and we have the pork. Let's just slice it up a little bit, see if it's, uh, if it looks like it's fully cooked. And this one at least does look like, you know, we're in business here. I would love to linger and chat longer, but we're starving, so let's eat. It's really good. Oh my gosh. I don't usually get this way about flat areas like this one, but it is truly beautiful out here. I had no idea. those places that just feels nice and it's mainly a golf course and a disc golf course and all that but um, I don't know, it's, it's so pleasant here with that lake uh, behind us so I just came out to check out the laundry to, and uh, to extend our stay here by one extra night so I didn't bring my regular camera so this is the iPhone 11 what you're looking at it's gonna look good enough right Let's look at that this golf course. That's what they call the man cave. It's like a gathering area. And there's like a like a banquet hall back there. Yeah. There's Minitini back there, and this is the the brickyard plantation disc golf course. Well, we've been here for like two days and we really haven't done much but today we're gonna change that we have to go into the post office to mail some CDs and stickers and magnets and then then we're gonna do some history Actually, the main reason we decided to stay an extra night is to visit Americas and more importantly Plains, Jimmy Carter's hometown. One of the main points of interest here is the Windsor Hotel. But on second thought, we better visit on the way back to the campground. Let's take care of the mail first and then go to Plains. Here we are, Plains, Georgia, looking rather plain at first sight, but of course, this town is all about its best-known son, the 76th governor of Georgia and the 39th president of the United States, and most longevous at that. As of this edit, Jimmy Carter is 96 years old and he still lives here. This is the main building, Jimmy Carter's high school, but it seems to be undergoing renovations. Instead, let's go see another point of interest. The Railroad Depot, Jimmy Carter's presidential campaign headquarters. Well, we obviously didn't do enough research. This seems to be like the, uh, the old railroad station here in Plains, Georgia. And uh, this was Jimmy Carter's headquarters. And, uh, and apparently there's a tour and this is uh, the first stop in that tour so let me find out the plains depot that's the farm it's like a self-guided tour they have all these exhibits about this place and jimmy carter what seem to be reproductions of the original campaign banners There's what looks like a TV from the era, 
with footage of Jimmy Carter's campaign. That is pretty cool. Let me take a picture of that map so we have a map. Plains? Not a bad looking town. Now that we have a map, let's go back to the high school. Oh well. Building temporarily closed. Following CDC guidelines, recommendations. All right. Well, let's go to the farm, I guess. And uh, maybe we'll go around the building real quick, just to see the front. And uh, besides being closed because of the pandemic, it's, um, they're doing some kind of construction here. Beautiful houses here in Plains. Let's go towards the boyhood farm. Here to the right, we'll see it better later, but that's Jimmy Carter's current home right there. Here's the spot where Jimmy left his indelible mark in 2010. Well, here we are at the at Jimmy Carter's boy, boyhood farm. I got myself, you know, one of these. You know, I'm collecting them. And uh, oh, look at them. They're coming to see us. Hey there, fellas. Oh, look at that. You think they could jump this fence? Hello? What? You're saying? Hey, you guys look That's very cool. I know what that is. That is an outhouse. We've got some chickens. That's it. The farm was owned by Jimmy's father, Errol, from 1928 until 1949, so he lived here from age four until he went to college. This must be our tour guide. And that's a pecan tree, I believe. What we're about to see has been restored to the way it would have looked at the time, before electrification. Shall we? Well, I doubt the fire alarm was there in the 1930s, but everything else seems legit. This must have been the kitchen. And here's the living room. Wow, indoor plumbing, very modern. And check out the shower head. Yep, just a bucket with holes in the bottom. The dining room. My grandmother had a singer sewing machine just like that one. These, by the way, the formal dining room. The family enjoyed most of their meals here at the breakfast room. This was Earl and Lillian's bedroom. And that's rather modern, I think. A battery-powered radio. This must have been the girls' room. Well, this was a super educational trip back in time. Now, let's step outside. That was cool. Very, very pleasant hey, backyard here. You know to enjoy your afternoon sweet tea. Now let's continue exploring the other structures here at the, at the Carter boyhood home, boyhood farm. Bye. 
Well, what do you know, they did have a store. The narration is barely intelligible, but apparently most items were purchased on credit. And then the other farmers would pay after the harvest was done. had all kinds of things. Very, very cool to see all these products from that time period. Pretty cool. They had their own store and everything. Look at that old rusted out uh, circular saw. And this is the, the back door. I think we have to go that way now. Old style laundry facilities here. The Carter's oil well, I mean, water well. <laughs> Here's the family garden. we got here oh of course it is the blacksmith shop so cool also to see all the old tools and that must be the barn and the pump shed the harness shed it is not snow, it's pollen. Hello there. Hello. Hey, what are you doing? Is that a smile I see? Okay, no need to get upset. I'm leaving, okay? Let's see what we've got in here. It's not a stable. It looks like the Carters were doing pretty well for themselves. A beautiful farm here in Georgia. Now uh, the journey continues. This is the historic Lebanon Cemetery. And this is supposed to be a haunted house. And as promised, here's a closer look at Jimmy Carter's home. Probably the closest you can get to a living president residence. And I hope the Secret Service doesn't mind me filming. Coming up here to the left, Billy Carter's service station, Jimmy's brother. Now let's go down to Americas. Check out the Windsor Hotel. What can I say? They had me at wine tasting. Unfortunately, it's all sweet and muscadine wine, so we decided to keep on going. But first, let's go see the hotel lobby.
doesn't seem to be open. But a pretty good looking downtown. It's got character, it looks old, and had they had something other than muscadine in there, we might have had a wine tasting. But let's continue. <laughs> We're back. Let's get something to eat. It is time for yet another RV cooking show. And excuse the noise, but it's getting hot in Georgia, believe it or not. And today it's going to be a combination. I'm going to do ropa vieja, kind of, sort of, with whatever ingredients we have there that haven't gone bad yet. But we're going to do a combination. First, I'm going to boil the meat using the pressure cooker, which in our case is the instant pot. I should have rehearsed this. And then we're gonna cook a sofrito, you know, traditional sofrito, and then mix them both together, and it's gonna be awesome, trust me. I still wish they made this cable a little longer, but I think it might reach our power outlet down here. And it does. And if it sounds like I'm yelling, it's because the air conditioner is really loud. Luckily, when it's in it too, it's gonna have ducted AC. Now, this is what we've got. It's still half frozen. It's a, it's a falda. Brisket flat cut. And uh, that's what we're gonna, you know, boil in there for, I don't know, an hour or so. Pressure. I have to cut it in half. Peeling the carrots, chopping the carrots, now the celery, gotta have onions, and of course green peppers, now garlic, yeah I like to do it from scratch, and the meat is ready, now it's just a matter of shredding it. Now for the sofrito, onion, salt and pepper, our green peppers, more salt, the carrots and celery, we'll mince the garlic really quick and add it too. Cooking wine, beer, tomato sauce, more salt, Paprika, oregano, cumin, some hot sauce courtesy of our friend Mark from the Nullen, and the beef. A little bit of that beef stock and a little more tomato sauce, it's gotta have the right color. Manzanilla olives, green peas, mmm, it's gonna be so good. Now we're gonna use that beef stock to make some basmati rice. Well, this is almost ready. We're just uh, making some basmati rice. And we uh, came up with the innovation of using that same, uh, you know, uh, broth from the meat. Looks like it came out pretty good. Let's dig in. Hmm. Maybe it needs a little more salt, but other than that, it's good. Well, this was a very nice KOA. And if I was into disc golf, it would have been even better. And one of these days I may take up the sport, but right now, right now we're going back to Florida. So many pecan trees. We 
We're going to stop by SL Sausage Company and buy some sausage and bacon to take to Pelly Camp. We've been here before. I figured let's get some sausages. I think it was 2017 that I was here. Oh, it's a carnivore's paradise. So much good stuff. We decided to get some frozen sausages from the to-go section. Hmm, should we get a pecan pie? Hmm, not today, but we got some bacon too. So let's go before we buy the whole store. I well, we got some sausages, some bacon, some goodies. And now we continue towards Florida. Here, uh, we're in Cordell, Georgia, by the way. And we are back in our home state of Florida. And this is pretty much the season finale. Spring 2021 is over and it was a short travel season. I was more concentrated in finishing up Pelicamp, our North Florida retreat. And we did. And it came out great. Coming up in a week or two, we begin the summer 2021 season. Until then, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. Once again, I'd like to thank Omaze for sponsoring this episode at omaze.com slash travelingrobert. I'm free in my arms.